Hello, welcome to Power and Poundage Drum Magazine. This is Coram Latigra. And um, normally I would interview uh, guitar uh, drummers, I should say. This is basically a drum channel. But, you know, I thought I want to do something a little different. I want to interview different musicians, background, where they're from, and kind of open up a little bit. So today, my special guest, I have a really special guest, She's a singer, songwriter, guitar player, teacher, uh, worship leader, whatever else that she wants to tell, tell herself about. Um, please welcome Cheyenne Marden to Power and Pounders. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for having me, Ren. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for, uh, for being available. I know you're really busy and, um, you know, it, it's it's a pleasure to have you. You know, I just wanted to say, you know, hope you guys are doing well. Your family's doing well through all yeah. this COVID crisis. Uh, what what have you guys been doing? Uh, with COVID, I mean, when everything shut down, it's um, you know maybe you know we kind of our lives kind of slowed down in a sense. We couldn't go out much, but the church was you know, trying to walk that out as a worship leader in a church that um, didn't really have a live stream, yeah. uh, a, very, a very good one, at least, you know, we, we kind of just had, uh, we did, we did an iRig that plugged into the soundboard and then, you know, didn't care what it sounded like going to Facebook or anything like yeah. that. So yeah, going into COVID, it was like, oh man, now we have to learn all this stuff. So <laughs> <laughs> I know how, huh? right. That, that's kind of what I'm doing now with all this. Yeah, I think everybody's kind of everything's out of stock and kind of kind of learning things and don't know what to plug in stuff. But you know, I, I, so I guess it was it was somewhat good to you know learn new things. I actually started learning piano. You know, That's awesome. I can't say I can play like I can play a couple of songs, but <laughs> not ready for it. It did mainly for me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So I just want to just get into, you know, um, I mentioned you play guitar, you sing a songwriter. Um, how did all that come about, you know, mm -hmm. when when you were, what was your musical adventure? Yeah, I mean, I started music pretty young. Um, I was probably like nine or ten, uh, but I actually started with violin. Um, that was my okay. thing. And then I got to middle school and they were saying how um, violas aren't very popular instrument, um, but they're great to get into like a nice college. You can get great scholarships. Um, so I took that as an opportunity. Okay, I'll switch over to viola. Um, and, I, and I loved it. So that was kind of my thing through middle school, high school. Um, I even, I thought I was gonna go to um, viola and kind of major in um, some type of orchestra um I don't know just kind of that was kind of my vision for a while um but then I you know I always kind of wanted to learn guitar I thought it was kind of cool um you know I'm really into like pop punk when I was younger too um classic rock um so the guitar is always interesting to me um so I kind of picked it up a little bit and I was like okay like this is cool um and then I you know I started going to this uh this church Oh, it was actually Harvest. They used to have like this musician network. I don't know if you've heard of that. Okay. Um, they used to have it Monday nights or something like that. Um, and so I would go and I would just kind of listen to the worship. You know, I only knew a couple chords, so I didn't like try to put myself on the worship team or anything like that. Um, but then uh, Scott Cunningham came by and he's oh, yeah. uh, the worship pastor over at Calvary Coast. Yeah. Mason, and he yeah. shared about school of worship. Yeah, I know Scott. He's, he's yeah. a great guy. Great guy. Um, and I saw him. He brought his daughters, and they sang and led worship. And then he shared about the school of worship. And I was like, and it just hit me right there. I was like, okay, I think I think this is it. This is where I need to go. And so um, I just felt the Holy Spirit just say, "Yep, this is this is your path. You're not going to do the viola viola kind of <laughs> route. You're going to go guitar." Um, I don't know what it meant as like worship leader or anything. I never saw yeah. myself singer per yeah. se um but i just tried to follow the spirit um and so i uh, I, I was playing for six months when i first wow. joined shuva's worship team so i had a lot to learn <laughs> so so how, how old were you when you like did you take lessons when you were young or you just it just came 
naturally I, to wear. I used to pick it up. I used to spend, I remember like summertime. I think I got it. I think I got my guitar actually for Christmas. That was what it was one year. Okay. And we had two weeks off from school and I just sat in my room and played for like eight hours straight. Like, <laughs> Did you have any, you know, guitar, um, I wouldn't say idols, but guitar admirers that you liked growing up? Because, um, you know, everybody's got the Van Halens and, <laughs> you know, yeah. you know, the whole rock guitar people and Hendrix and so forth. And yeah. uh, I'm a big John Mayer fan. He's kind of... Um, uh, a big guitar influence of mine. Um, but I did like the edge. I mean, he's, he's so simple with his guitar playing, but he's very creative with the sounds and stuff. Yeah. And it does kind of go over into worship, especially contemporary now, um, with some of the effects that people use. Um, so those are kind of my two, my two guys that I really enjoyed listening to mostly. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, that in like, Elementary school, uh, middle school. I and learned guitar. Kinda... Guitar. I was sixteen when I started. Sixteen. Okay. A little bit later, and you know, I guess my youth. I guess you would yeah. say. Um, but yeah, I, I picked it up, and then I joined the worship team at Shuva. Okay. Um, I had. I don't know if you ever worked with Steve Wiggins, but he was the yeah. worship. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I didn't play, and, and for those of you, you know, me and Cheyenne, we played together on the, on the Shuba worship team a couple of years ago, so mm -hmm. um, that's why she's mentioning Shuba. Um, but yeah, I, I never met Steve Wiggins. I've heard about him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he was the worship leader there. I kind of just tried to mimic him, you know, okay. with he played acoustic, so I just yeah. kind of backed him up. Um, you know, I didn't even know how to play bar chords at the time, and so wow. I was just trying to play it off like I knew what I was doing. Um, but it's true about musicians. You know, when you play with people that are better and hands-on, like, you get yeah. better uh, a lot quicker than you think. And so yeah, I'm super grateful for that. So now, when when you were in high school, did you try to form a band? Did you want to get into a, a, a band and people around your neighborhood? Were your parents supportive of you pursuing music? Because you know how it is with parents, you know? Is there, you tell them, you know, I want to do music for a living and so forth. And then uh, maybe plan B, try to come up with a plan B, <laughs> you know, yeah. um, but that, that was your goal. That was your mindset. Did your parents try to uh, uninfluence you to not play <laughs> and do something different, you know? Yeah. No, my parents have been always support. I mean, the, the, the worst mix as a career, a worship leader and a musician, like, oh, yeah. that's, that doesn't pay anything, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But they have been super supportive since day one. My dad's an artist, so okay. he gets the creative. And, you know, as long as I follow the Lord's will, you know, he's going to provide. So that, yeah. that, was their, that was their thing. It was like, whatever God's calling you to do, we'll support it 100%. Um, so, right. yeah. Yeah, because, you know, like I say, you get parents that, because for some reason, I don't know why it is with the self-employed type of work. It's it's always a a struggle, you know. Is, yeah. and, and whether it be modeling, music, because I, I went through that as well, you know. And and you know sometimes it, it's good to listen to family, but I you know, yeah, it is what it is. When your heart is focused on one thing and that's what you want to do, and God's called you to that, go for it. Yeah. You know? Oh, that that's great. So now, you, did you go to any music schools? Like um, after graduation, did you go to like MI or, uh, or you, basically it was just self-taught in a sense? Uh, yeah, I went to the School of Worship through Scott Cunningham okay. through Calvary Costa Mesa. Uh, it's a nine-month program. Okay. Where people want to do worship leading uh, specifically. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they had uh, a couple guitar courses that I got to take. Um, but a lot of it is self-taught. I learned a lot like music theory and a lot of the things that I teach to understand like note reading. I learned through doing orchestra for so okay. long. Um, um, but a lot of my experience is just hands-on. Um, yeah. So, you know, I've, I've taken some other courses, like some one-on-ones and you know, today's world, YouTube has some great um, teachers on there that have curriculum. Um, 
so I've, I've done some of their things, but yeah, I just did the school of worship nine month program. It, it was a grind. It was Monday through Friday, nine to 12. And then oh. you would do a lab after to practice. And then, yeah. you know, I would work too. Cause I'd, I paid rent at the time too. And yeah. um, so it was a grind, but it was probably the best nine months of my life. And it really set me up for today. And yeah, it, pre it prepared you yeah. because you don't, I mean, you don't really think about, like a school being, you know, hard. You just think, oh, I'm just going to go play. Yeah. Especially a school that has, you know, biblical content about worship. Yes. You know, you have to learn the spiritual side of that too. It's not just playing yeah. the guitar or drums or bass. It, you a know, lot of leadership. You have to learn the reason why we, we worship and what are we there for. Yeah. Exactly. And, and the, 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 maybe even the, the theological, theologian part of worship, you know. Right. Um, so, so once you graduated, what year did you graduate from the School of Worship? Uh, 2015. Actually, my six-year anniversary was like a couple days ago. Which is really? Cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, I think I saw something on your, your Facebook page. Yeah. You know, that you had your... That was six years ago, though. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't recent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I, you you were holding up your 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 sign and everything <laughs> on your Facebook page that, that that you graduated. You know, so once you graduated, did you just start pursuing more at a church, or was it just you just kind of getting your feet wet, playing with other people? How did Shuva come about? Uh, Shuva I was a part of Shuva. I joined in two thousand like thirteen, um, okay. so I was still in high school. Um, but yeah, I, I worked under Steve. I just kind of followed him and then he left. Uh, we went through a, a bunch of other worship leaders before Jim came along, which is our yeah. current worship leader right now at Shuva. Um, so that, that was rough. Um, when you have, yeah, changing, I heard a little bit about that. Yeah. Great, great guys. Um, but it's hard when you rotate so many leaders, you know, um, but yeah, Jim came along and he was great. He gave me, he helped me vocally. Um, he's, he's got, um, some great vocal talent so he taught me some stuff and then um you know I, I talked with him about some mentoring and you know he kind of pushed me to to be more confident and lead songs um I don't think I really led much except at school so it was nice that he kind of gave me a hands-on uh experience yeah. to worship and then um eventually I a little couple years after I graduated uh, I think it was maybe a year or two later um I got another, I started going to another church and leading on Sundays. It was super small, like maybe 15 people, but at least it gave me that experience on how to lead and have like a small team and how to plan a set list every week and, you know, things that come along like that. Okay. And then you start having the, getting that confidence and maybe leading sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's hard. Again, like, I didn't see myself as a singer. So when yeah. the Lord was like, you're going to be a worship leader, I'm like, yeah, right. <laughs> like, uh, did, in, did you take vocal lessons apart from at the school of worship, learning guitar and all that and other yeah, things? Yeah, at school of worship, I took guitar. I learned bass there. Um, I took a little bit of drums, believe it or not. Oh, really? um, okay. I led a song on drum, or I didn't lead really? it. I played with a group we did a song together and I played drums. It was fun. Um, but I mostly took vocals. I was like not confident. I didn't, you know, I don't really care for my voice kind of thing. That was kind of my attitude. Um, no experience at all. So I did, I did a vocal class there. I did, I did private lessons for a while. It kind of got a little expensive. So I stopped. Yeah. Um, and then just the hands on every week trying to, yeah. once I got, doing it it was doing Sundays regularly that mm -hmm. kind of really developed my voice um I actually took vocal lessons at Saddleback they take they have a school of music uh some music academy I'm not sure okay. if they're wording for it but they offer like lessons as well so yeah I took some vocal lessons there um a couple years ago actually so um yeah so I just I just I accept who I am, you know, I'm not going to be like a Kim Walker Smith or anything like that. Um, you know, or some people just, it comes naturally and they have a powerhouse voice. Um, but God uses my voice for what, what it is. And, yeah. um, 
you know, I'm confident in him and his abilities that he's given me. So that's all. That's yeah, all. That's, yeah. You know, that that's all. You, that's, I think that's what we have to be when, when, I mean, yeah, we have our influences and we have people that we admire their playing. Mm. But try to be like them or copy them in some way. You know, I, I always tell my drum students, just be you. Yeah. <laughs> just be you because, you know, they're here some fancy or see some fancy drumming on YouTube and oh, I want to play like that. I'm like, <laughs> dude, just <laughs> let's just get the basics first. Just, you know, that, that stuff would come later, you know, and, and you be you. Don't try to be like somebody else. And I, and I love what David Little said, you know, make it your own. Yeah. You know, when you're, when you're doing things, let, let it be, just make it your own. Make it because you have your own identity. You have your own identity in the guitar and, and, and drums or whatever instrument that person plays, mm -hmm. you know, and just make it your own. Yeah. So you come from, you, you graduated from the school of worship. And then you start playing at Shuva. Jim's kind of mentoring you like. And then what happened after that? Yeah, so uh, I decided, you know, the Lord was calling me away from Shuva. Uh, it was a hard decision, really. I mean, we were there for like almost 10 years, uh, my, oh. me and my family, uh, my husband as well. Yeah. And um, so it was hard, but I just knew that I was doing too much, you know. And, um, you know, I just... I knew that I had to just focus on that one church for Sundays and just be totally committed. Um, and so I did this church. It's called Calvary Chapel, San Ana Valley. Uh, there's, they're still around. Um, but yeah, I was there for about a year and a half or so. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just me and my husband. He plays percussion. Um, so we did that. And um, yeah, I just, I kind of just developed through that. Um, I learned a lot, you know, working with a pastor. I've never worked on, you know, one-on-one, -on -one how it is being a worship leader with a pastor and working together. And um, that's a lot what they talked about in school of worship, but you don't really experience it until you come to that yourself. Um, so that was, that was good. Um, and then, yeah, I, th I think after about a year and a half, you know, Marcel and I, uh, my husband, we got married. Um, and then the Lord was kind of tugging us elsewhere. That church was small. Uh, they didn't have a lot of people our age anymore. Um, so it was like, we kind of wanted to find community, you know, couples that were our age and stuff. So yeah. we decided to go church hopping after that. Um, I stepped down and um, I think we spent like six months or something like that, trying to find oh. a church. Like it was a long time and it was frustrating for me because, you know, I really, that, that's what I wanted to do. Right. The worship yeah. leading. I want, this is like my calling. This is what I find purpose in my life. And, yeah. you know, the Lord's having me here just be silent um, and not doing anything. So, yeah. you know, it was a rough season, but it was nice, you know, um, God kind of worked in me and, um, you know, spoke to me on and worked on things in my life and my heart. And um, eventually I came, we came across a couple churches and, um, this one we came across was called uh, uh, Vision City. It's in Irvine. Um, really great church. I We got plugged in there and we liked the teaching a lot. Um, I started leading worship for the women's team and stuff like that. Um, and we saw it was super promising. We're like, okay, this is home. This is it. This is it. And, um, and then a friend of mine called me from School of Worship and he said, hey, I'm a worship leader over at this church called His Place. We're in Huntington Beach. Um, yep. I'm just looking for a guest to come on a Sunday. And at the time at Vision, I wasn't on the team. I never yeah. actually joined. Um, so I was like, yeah, sure, I'll come by and be a guest. Like, no big deal, whatever, yeah. right? So I, I led that Sunday with him. I, I did, like, one song. I remember it was, like, um, a super fun, small church. Yeah. Um, and then that following week, uh, the pastor, Pastor Ed Carlson, called me. Okay. And he was like, hey, we're going to start this uh, midweek service on Thursdays. Do you want to... <laughs> possibly like join us and lead worship <laughs> were, 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 you, were you nervous the first time you you actually led um at the at the church at that church oh yeah i mean it was bigger so yeah definitely yeah yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. Was, I was so used to like 15 people you know for as long as i was there at the other church yeah. um at the time i think that his place i think they were like 60 you know 60 70 adults yeah um 
Did you play acoustic? Was there just you and your husband? He played the like the. No, it, was a, and... it was a full band. It was okay. the, the worship leader. I was the guest, so it was. Oh, me. you were the guest. Gotcha. There was a drummer, bass player. So that was like the first time I played with a full band since okay. I was at Shuva. So it had been a couple years. Um, but yeah, he called me that week and I was like, okay, like, I don't really know you, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I didn't feel like, I didn't feel like God was saying no. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so we, I started leading on Thursdays and, um. I was asked a couple times if I wanted to come on Sundays. I was like, eh, I kind of like this other church, you know, so I'm not really sure. Um, it was, because it was a lot younger. Not so much younger, but I just like, we felt like comfortable already. We were like, okay, yeah. you, know, you know how we get comfortable and it's oh, like, yeah. I don't want to move. Like, <laughs> yeah. Again. <laughs> Again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so there was like this tug and pull for a couple months and then um, I ended up doing Good Friday over at his place and okay um, that's pretty big good friday yeah i mean and that's everybody's coming everybody <laughs> easter and christmas are like the two we, biggest holidays people come we did good know. friday and then i um i didn't go on easter i was at the other church and we sat there at, at vision i mean great church but we just sat there and we're like this isn't it this is not it you know yeah and then that week, the worship leader called me and he said, hey, would you want to co-lead with me? Like, it'd be cool to have like a female lead leader um, yeah. on the team. You know, you'd be full time. So every Sunday you would play. And I was like, you know, God's giving me this. And I keep going, nah. <laughs> nah. Uh, and so I was finally like, you know what? Let's do it. You know, let's, let's yeah. get plugged in. Um, and so... We came and we actually came on baptism Sunday and I okay. love the way our church does it. So we do our baptisms and we play music. And when someone comes out yeah. of the water, we're like screaming and, yeah. and you know, it was just an emotional day. And so, yeah. so since then, yeah, I've been there. I'm uh, that worship leader ended up leaving by the end of the year and I've been full time for about three and a half years now. Um, wow. Awesome. Yeah. See, you know, it's, it's, and it's all, it, it is being faithful in those little things. Yeah. You know, if we're faithful in the little things, God increases and he, he gives you more things, mm -hmm. you know, to, to do. So now you're, you're, this is where you are now in his place. Yes. In, yes. in Huntington. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I have to, I have to uh, put you guys it's the link down on the yeah, subscription sure. there, you know. And, and now you guys, if you go, if you go to his place, just don't go to see Cheyenne. Go to go to worship and hear about God. <laughs> so you know, because you know, some people just go to see that worship leader or that band or whatever. You know, yeah. don't go see her. Go hear the word of God if you go to, to his place. It's in Huntington Beach. So, um, but yeah, so okay, so that's currently where you are. Mm -hmm. And you're you're the main now working with a, a band compared to playing by yourself. Is it because you're dealing with different personalities? You're dealing with different musicians. You you're the leader. You have to tell people, okay, let's let's that's too loud on the drums. Let's bring it down. I mean, how how does that in in you know in today's culture, unfortunately, especially being a woman, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of respect. But did you have that, you know, oh, she's a woman type of a thing and I'm not going to be, how, how does that work? Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a great, great thing. Um, it's a good struggle. I mean, uh, what's funny is when that old worship leader left, um, our pastor hired in um, a more experienced worship leader to, to mentor me, to actually like, he's had 30 years as a worship pastor under many churches. Um and so I kind of learned from him and, um, I think, I think that kind of helped in the sense that, you know, the team saw that I was learning, um, but I was super passionate about it. I think that's, that's the one thing I think people will always bring up is that I'm always passionate about worship. I am serious about the Lord. I'm serious about music. Um, you know, even just as a, a general term, um, and, you know, that energy and that kind of feeling and passion rubs off. And I think as I was being mentored and stuff like that, they saw the growth. And so as they saw the growth, they realized, 
you know, she's transparent, she's open, she's, she's, she knows when to fail, but also be honest and open about it, but also has grown a lot from it. So I think I earned my respect in that time yeah. of being mentored. And then as that, that worship leader kind of transitioned out from our church, um, giving me the full responsibility, you know, I was put to test, right. You know, uh, making decisions when certain holidays would come up, making sure that I would come through. Um, you know, there was some some pushback. I had a couple of things here and there, you know, with arguments and things, but you just got to put your foot down. Um, it's it's hard, you know. In ministry, you have to have grace, um, yeah. Yeah. but you have to have thick skin. Um, that's and, what I've and, learned. You know, and, and having known you, you don't you don't seem like that type of person that would go. You not but yeah. <laughs> you just don't have that character in you, you know. Yeah, you have to be. <laughs> You have to be graceful. Um, yeah. You know, a lot of the times you're working with people that aren't paid. So you have to work with that aspect, you know, of, okay, these people are doing this on their free time. They might not necessarily have the time during the week to always practice, but, you know, that's okay. And um, you learn to have a balance. Um, yeah. And that's all you can do, you know. And if, if you always bring it back to giving God your best, I think as long as you bring it back to the Lord and bring it back to why we do what we do, yeah. I, I think that's where you get the respect rather than I just want perfection. I want this, you know, exactly. I, I want a lot of things, but yeah. it's all up to him, you know, the Lord more so than whatever I want, you know. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's that, that phrase Pastor Chuck used to say, do your best and commit the rest. Yeah. You know, I mean, we, when we do our best, we can, can, you know, we commit the rest to him and, you know, let God work it out. And um, that that's what we have to do, you know, and I'm sure in your situation, especially being, you know, worship leader and especially it's, it's almost like, you know, it, people just want to see you like just venture out and just achieve you know that that goal and that calling yeah you know so that that's awesome so now you 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 guys are every every sunday you and you 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 guys prep for you guys have rehearsal uh when do you prep for the sunday service like tomorrow is friday so you probably <laughs> you'll probably practice T tomorrow something for sunday <laughs> yeah we uh, right now um it's been a process you know when i first joined we it i couldn't even get people to practice for sunday um yeah it was bad uh but as i started you know gaining my experience and gaining some respect um we we i would implement practices here and there we used to do like my first year we would practice for like big holidays so easter christmas we made sure to practice during the week together uh, and then once we kind of got comfortable with that, I implemented once a month or sorry. Yeah. Once a month. Yeah. I did once a month. Uh, we would do Thursdays or Fridays, depending on our schedule at the church. Um, and then this past year, I finally implemented every other week. So we do every other Friday, um, which is good. I mean, a lot of churches do every week, but we're also pretty small. Um, I think I've only got like six or seven people. So that's a lot to rotate, you know, yeah, yeah. a lot of practice in, in, for a small group of people. If we were a little bigger, maybe it'd be easier to do yeah. it regularly. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that's helped. It helps us a lot. We've been able to do, um, especially new songs, you know, getting comfortable. And then it's always different, right? When you play with someone rather than practicing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's always different when you're doing sound check. <laughs> yeah, and then when you actually play, you yeah. know, of course, it's better when you actually are playing compared to sound check. And when you're doing sound check, you're working on different parts. Your monitor that, mix, you know. and whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could be, it could be kind of like, wait, that's not what we practice, <laughs> you know. So now, how did you? Because you, you you speak about your faith, and how did how did all that come about when? when you were a little girl, it was, how did the gospel come to you? Because nobody just starts out playing at a church, yeah. you know, without knowing the spiritual side of why they're doing what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So how did that all develop? When did you know about God and, and, and how did you become a believer? Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. So I have the, you know, a great blessing that my parents um, grew me up in the church and my parents are still together. You know, that's not a very common thing anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. My parents have been together for over 30 years. Um, so Christian that's family awesome. grew up in a Christian family, um, you know, and um, so I always grew up in the word. My, my, my parents' roles were almost reversed. My mom would work in the office and my dad would stay home with me. Um, so we was, we would do Bible studies together. Um, and he, he was really great at illustrating the Bible for me and stuff like that. And I think I was around 12 or 13 when I really like, I remember being in my room alone and getting on my knees and saying that prayer. Um, you know, I just, I'm like, I know that, I know that you're real and I know that I need a savior. Um, I didn't totally grasp. I don't think I really grasped the concept because I, I did walk away from the Lord uh, yeah. for a, a time of my life. Um, but that was really when I gave my heart to the Lord. I got baptized um, uh, shortly after that. Um, but yeah, when I was uh, 16, so right when I started learning guitar, um, I made friends with some people that just were not great. Um, you know, I, I never... I never did anything. I never got into like drugs or alcohol or anything yeah. like that, but yeah. I just had people who were really negative and, and bitter. And, um, um, my friend was really into the LGBTQ, um, kind of stuff. And so I kind of just went towards that and supporting her with that. And, um, you know, just when you get more into the world, you kind of just walk away from, yeah. from God. And I, I knew who God was. I believed in God, but I came to, this idea that I'm like, okay, I'm saved. So now I can just do whatever I want. I don't actually have to do anything. You know, I'm, I'm going to heaven, but who cares what I do. Right. Um, but obviously that's <laughs> not correct. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I was friends with those people for about a year, year and a half. Um, I remember going, I used to do the LGBTQ meetings and um, man, like just the hatred for God was just it's, it's, it's sad, um, really, but, yeah. um, so I just kind of just, I wasn't interested in God and I wasn't even interested in music. I had picked up the guitar. I started learning right when I turned 16, but when I started walking away from him, I never picked up the guitar again. Yeah. Um, and so after that, you know, that's like, a, I think it was a summer before my senior year or something like that. Um, I remember my friend just said, okay, I'm not, I don't want to be friends anymore. See ya. And at the time it was like, because she was so bitter and so angry and just kind of would isolate um, me from up, all my other friends, I had lost all my other friends. So she was my only friend. Um, and so when she said, oh, I just don't want to be friends anymore. I was like, oh, okay. You know? And then I, I had no one. So I spent the summer, um, totally just isolated. I went through, um, anxiety. I would have panic attacks. Um, I wasn't eating, I uh, wasn't sleeping, depression, you know, things like that just, you know, were attacking me. Um, and then it was like towards the end of the summer, um, you know, my relationship with my parents was kind of rough too, because, you know, they were still strong Christians and wanted me to walk the right walk, but I didn't really care. Um, they knew I was friends with someone who wasn't good for me. Um, and so my mom, you know, took me outside one day. She was like, when was the last time you read your Bible? Like just yeah. very blunt. And I was like, oh, I don't know. Like, I, I have no idea. Um, and so I remember I was like, maybe I should just open it up, you know? And um, so I was really struggling with anxiety. I, I, I still, I feel like it's kind of, um, it's one of those thorns in my side. I can definitely sometimes still deal with it but it was so bad that I just would wake up like in the middle of the night I couldn't breathe I wasn't eating like it, it was wow. it was really bad um so I just started lear uh, learning scripture you know mm -hmm. about anxiety um you know Philippians 4 that was a great chapter you're always talking about joy being anxious for nothing um you know the first Peter 5 um give uh, cast all uh, anxieties on him because he cares for you um, those ones, you know, really helped me not be anxious anymore. And, um, you know, so I, I started to lean more into the Bible. I wasn't tr truly committed. I was kind of like, okay, like I, I can see where this is going. This is helping me. Um, I started getting out of my funk, out of my depression, out of my anxiety. Um, 
And then, so my, I think it was my senior year, I believe. Um, I, we, my parents actually became the youth uh, leaders at Shuva. I don't know if you knew that. Okay. Um, they were there. And so we were going to go to a, uh, a youth retreat. So I ended up going, um, I was still kind of struggling with stuff, you know, anxiety and things, but I was, I was committed to going to church. I was like, okay, I'll, I'll fill this thing out. Not a big deal. Um, I started playing guitar again a little bit, started feeling a little bit more passionate about it. Um, you know, it was a nice outlet to have. Um, and then I remember the, uh, the first night at that youth retreat, the, the worship leader found out I played guitar. So she was like, Hey, do you want to play? Um, and you know, at the time I was like, I, I'm, I'm generally an introvert kind of shy, you know, you probably yeah. know that. And I was like, okay, yeah, sure. Like whatever, like I'll, I'll play something. Right. Um, and so we played a couple songs and it was, it was cool. And then she was like, well, how about you lead a song? And I said, I'm like, geez, lead a song. Like, yikes. Um, <laughs> now were you still, were you coming out of your back, backslidden or you were, I was still, kind of just, I was coming out of it. Oh, um, okay. I was at least committed to going to church. And when I was friends with that, that one girl, she, I didn't, I hated going to church. Um, I didn't care about anything. No. Um, but when my parents became the youth leaders, it kind of helped because it got me more involved. And I, I've always enjoyed my dad's teachings. Um, so it kind of piqued my interest, um, but I wasn't totally committed yet. Um, until that, that evening, I remember, um, they asked me to lead a song. And so I led how he loves. Um, oh, yeah, and, yeah. and yeah, that's, that's when the spirit spoke to me. I was, wow. I haven't had the spirit really like speak to me in such a, such a moment of like, I don't know, just washing over me so much yeah. I, a couple times in my life, but that was one. And that was just him saying, you're going to be a worship leader. This is what you're going to be doing for the wow. rest of your life. Especially and, that song. Yeah. And I remember like finishing the song and I, I went into the crowd and I remember like just getting on my knees and I just total repentance after that. I, you know, I cried out to the Lord and said sorry for all the things I had, I had done in the summer and had been a part of um, and some of the things I'd said about God. And, you know, I just got right with him and it was, yeah. it was great. You know, music was kind of what brought me back into, you know, worship. It softens the heart. It really, really does. Yeah. And, I think that was huge for me. And if I didn't do that, I don't know. I don't and, he, know. and he, you know, the thing is, the good thing is he was there all along. Oh, yeah. He, he, he was there waiting for you all along. It's like that, like that story in the Bible about the prodigal, you know. And yeah. The guy went off and spent all his money and, and so forth. And, and he came back and his father ran to him. Yeah. You know, and so he was there all along waiting for you. So and the, the thing is, you know, and, and, and explain to, to people when you say repentance, what? Because a lot of people don't really know what that means, especially, you know, um, just in general, people. Explain basically what that means um, when, when someone says, I repented. And, and what do they have to do to come to Christ because there's a, especially nowadays there's a lot going on in the world people are confused and they're wondering what's, what everything is going about and you know you mentioned anxiety depression mm -hmm. so explain a little bit about how God can deliver a person from that and, and yeah. mainly do a u-turn yeah you know <laughs> pretty soon you know yeah I mean, it, it comes down to, you know, we're just stubborn people, right? And we want to do our own thing for as long as possible. And true repentance is, is that total heart change. It's completely doing a 180 from whatever you're doing and just turning away from it and saying, you know, I need help. I need you, Lord. I need, I'm in need of a savior. I'm in need of saving. Um, and I, I think that's huge. It, it's all about the heart. It comes down to that. I mean, you can say a lot of things, but, you know, the heart is what really shows who you are. Um, and that that's what it was for me. It was, you know, Lord, I'm sorry. Like, I'm so broken. And I try to do this thing on my own. 
but you knew the way and you know what's right for me and I don't want to do it and I don't want to do this anymore I don't want to be away from you anymore um and and then you you try to you repent as in you know again turning your heart into the right direction and away from the bad things and then trying to get right with God and you know it takes a process you know no one's perfect right we're still yeah. getting cleaned up and um, but it's always coming back to, you know, it's, it's like King David. He, he, for the things that he did, he oh, was an yeah. adulterer, <laughs> you know, he murdered yeah. somebody, but his, he was able to, his heart turned so quickly back to the Lord yeah. and he was ready to just, Lord, please, 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 please be my savior. And I'm so sorry. And, and the Lord, you know, he spared him for that and, and that's true repentance is it, it's all in the heart and it's about that. And, you know, you might slip up here and there and do things that yeah. aren't great, but as long as you keep saying, Lord, you know, I'm, I'm sorry. And I'm really trying, but you know, I'm doing my, the best that I can. And, and every single day, I, I, I think, I think our pastor said this this past week, every moment that we get closer to Jesus, we, we realize how much more we need him as yeah. we get closer and understand God. It's like, man, I, I really need him because I'm a mess. I cannot do this on my own. So, I mean, that's how I got out of anxiety and depression. I mean, it's not a perfect walk either. I still have anxiety. Um, oh yeah, I, I, everybody does. Yeah. I think with COVID, that was anxious for everybody. You know, yeah, exactly. But it's learning to, you know, be in your circumstances and and understand that. God has control and nothing passes through his hand without going through him first. Um, and even if a trial comes and something comes um, to have joy through it and realize that it's stretching you um, and molding you to be more like him so you can grow closer to him. And that's the ultimate thing, I think. Yeah. I, I, and I mean, you mentioned, you mentioned King David. I mean, that guy, <laughs> it's just like he and what he did, he gives us all hope. Because <laughs> I mean, you know, he, he, you know, murderer, adulterer. It's like sometimes I wonder, did he do all this all in one day? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, dude, I'm thinking, did you do all this in one every time you read that story? I wonder if he did it all in one day, or was it, you know, wow. you know, had somebody through, through a process, you know, but that's awesome. That, that's yeah. awesome. So, you know, and like you said, now you are you. It's, it's serving God is not just playing music. It's yeah. it's more than just that, right? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's just something that He's gifted you with for you to glorify Him in. Yeah. And it's just like any other thing that anybody else does. God has gifted people to glorify Him. Mm -hmm. and sometimes people don't know the gifts that they have until they come to Christ and realize this is what I called you for. This is what I made you for. So that's all. So now are you doing, um, are you do, uh, leading a women's group at church or do you, outside of your worship team or now that the, maybe hopefully the concert season will start opening back up, you know, right. what, what's currently going on uh, with you now? Are you writing your own material? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, some great stuff. I mean, the church is number one for me. That's my thing always. Um, I've got a lot more responsibility now. Um, you know, um, I oversee the audio visual, the new video teams we have. Um, okay. Anything creative arts, I kind of oversee yeah. now, which is nice. Um so I get my hands in that quite a bit, but on the side, you know, I, I teach music. So I, I run my own business. I also work for uh, Glee Music Academy. I've been there for two years. Um, okay. Which is awesome. Now the business that you want, what um, you said you own your own business. What, what is that one? Oh yeah. That's just uh private lessons as well. So. Oh, okay. Okay. So you teach on the side as well as. Yeah. Working for really music school. Okay. Yeah. 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 And then other than that, I mean, I, um, I've written a couple songs with some people. I'm currently, um, writing with this band called CPR 317. 
Um, and uh, I'm, I'm actually on a song that came out a couple months ago. Um, okay. I played some lead guitar and had some backing vocals. So yeah, yeah I, I write with them. There's some friends from church and he's got a punk rock band. So okay. it, it's fun. You know, it's fun to, we do um, contemporary or yeah, secular contemporary music, like the punk rock vibe, but um, yeah. they always have like a, a Christian meaning, so to speak, you know, whether yeah. it's, walking with the Lord and how the, how to walk with the Lord, right. Or, you know, struggling in the world or things like that. So that people who don't know the Lord, um, you know, are kind of like, Oh, I, I like these lyrics. And then they find out what the song is about kind of thing. So yeah. um, not too much lyric writing. That's kind of left up to the leader. Um, but I do a lot of guitar and stuff, which is fun. Um, now, do you, is it like a punk rock band and you just oh, like, yeah. Shaking your hand, just going. <laughs> See, I tried to get you into join my band, and that's okay. Mine's more metal, though. I don't know if you're into metal. metal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's cool, man. That's that's awesome. Are you guys going to do a CD in the future or what? Uh, I know he wants. We're starting to ramp up and just practice some songs. So I don't know if we're gonna write something or try to just go out and get a gig somewhere. Since yeah, it's too long. Um, yeah be super fun yeah and, and you know I, I i wanted to just kind of ask you about and just briefly um there's a lot of bands that and this is something that i want to kind of talk about on on a future podcast um christian bands and they don't want to say that they're a christian band it's one of these age-old questions like we're Christians in a band, but we don't want to call ourselves a Christian band. Yeah. As a musician, how, how do you see that? I mean, because I I'm, I get it, but then I don't get it. I, uh, I mean. Because there's a lot of bands that you thought that maybe they were a Christian band, but they yeah. wasn't. We're just, they just, either that or they just don't want to say that they're a Christian band because of. Yeah, won't be popular. A lot of uh, bands come to mind when I, I hear that, and then I see how they've drifted away from the Lord. So I don't mm -hmm. know what their walk is like, and you know, you've got to be strong in your faith, and you got to be, you know, it, it could be a more like a publicity, like, oh yeah, we're Christian, but it's like we're cool with, with all this other stuff. Like, don't worry about it. Um, but then there's bands. I mean, yeah, there's a band that I like, um, Citizens and Saints. I don't know if you know them. They, oh yeah. They um they write they were writing mostly Christian songs yeah. and then they wrote a, a secular album which was yeah. pretty decent and they got a lot of slack for it but I'm like no I think that's great you got to reach out to the exactly who don't know so yeah. I, it, it comes down to I mean I would say I'm a Christian and I'm writing for the Lord and if he uses it great yeah um, if it's Christian lyrics I mean that that's up to you and what you want to write and yeah. Exactly. And, and that because there's a number of bands, you know, Striper was one of them back in the day. You know, they did a secular album and everybody, oh, oh, oh. everybody just kind of, you know, but we, we knew what Striper was all about, you know, but there are some bands that um, you, you, the lyrics may be good, but you don't know if they're a Christian band or anything. And you know, I, I've always, and that's that's something that I kind of want to maybe bring in other musicians to have that that age old debate because I guess it, it is a debate in a sense. You know, are we a Christian band or are we just Christians in a band? Right. And, and I don't know why a person, especially if they're well known, whether they're individual solo artists or they're just a band, why they can't just say we're a Christian band. I don't yeah. know why that's hard. Is it because they're afraid of losing popularity? Yeah. You know, or it's almost like they're ashamed, mm -hmm. you know, to say that. But that's another, I was just curious on your take on that. You know, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, you know, it's how, a hard one. That's a, that's a hard topic, you know, but. Yeah, that, that's something I, I would like to get into. And that's maybe in the future podcast because I'm you know with the podcast I'm kind of coming up with topics that you hardly ever hear yeah you know or discuss so that's one of them <laughs> that's, that's one of them and, and so 
you know, maybe maybe in the future I can invite you back on with some other, and just kind of get a perspective of, yeah. of maybe some people want to say, yeah, I'm a Christian band, and some people say, no, you know, it's, you know, what it, what it, it is, what it is, but. Yeah. I know. I know you. I know you have to go. I think you got a lesson, don't you? This afternoon. Oh uh, yeah, at four o'clock. But okay. Yeah, I'm so grateful that we had a chance to talk. Of course. You know, and um, I know you're you're a busy woman. Just in closing, what? Just to kind of give, what would you encourage somebody, whether it be man or woman, to they wanted to pursue a career in music? Uh, what would be words of encouragement for that? And from a spiritual uh, perspective, you know, you kind of mentioned it before about repentance. So mm -hmm. what would be your words of encouragement for, for those things? To somebody who searching for God and for someone who wants to do, have a career in music in mm -hmm. general? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think it all comes down to, um, you know, humbling yourself and, um, you know, you've got to find the thing in life that, that gives you joy. And if it's music, you know, I, I would just say pursue it. And, you know, if, if there's a will, there's a way. Um, you know, I, I see that in the same way of God pursuing us. He's going to pursue us in every aspect, whether it's an intellectual way, um, whether it's more in an emotional way. Um, I've seen some of the smartest people who think like science and God can't go together, but they've seen how science can bring God uh, reveal God clear as day. Um, you know, I think God reveals himself to everybody. And I think you just have to humble yourself and just spend that time searching and listening. Um, I think we do a lot as just being stubborn and we don't want to hear that we need help, but we do. And, um, you know, as a musician, it's hard. It's not easy. You know, I see uh, the, the little paychecks come in. I see all the hard work that goes in, all the gear you have to buy that you can't afford. Um, but you know, I, you know, I just think as long as you keep doing what you love and, um, always find something new, you know, in, in your creativity. I, you know, I have students who play guitar or play ukulele or whatever they want to play bass and they kind of die out after like a year. Cause they're like, Oh, there's like nothing else I can learn, but it's, it's always about, what can I teach myself and what can I learn? And we're always, there's always something to learn, always something to be passionate about, you know, trying different genres, trying different things. Um, so that'd be my take is always just try to find something that you just don't know uh, that's kind of foreign to you. And um, I think that'd be great, you know, see what God has for you, you know, and that's the only way I know life is, and pursuing my, I, I would have no confidence if it wasn't for the Lord. Um, yeah. So, you know, I, I don't know if I would pursue a music career <laughs> if I didn't know the Lord, but I knew that he was going to provide every step of the way. Um, yeah. Yeah. You, know, you know, I have a husband who works really hard and um, makes a lot of our income. And that is a blessing to me. I don't have to work full time because of that. You know, I don't have to work 40 hours a week like I used to yeah. um, on top of being a musician. So yeah. it's, it's a blessing. Um, so I think first and foremost, humble yourself, um, search for God because he's always searching for you and reaching out. Um, and then yeah, with music, music, just find something new, something fresh. What, what made you passionate about it at first, you know, try to find that again. And, um, yeah. I think that's what I would yeah. say. That's, that's awesome, man. And, and like you say, you know, just, Pretty much, you know, just just God will meet you where you're at. Absolutely. You know, as we sing the song, I'm sure you you know, come as you are. Mm -hmm. You know, and 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 that that is, you know, people think they have to be right. They have to, you know, wear the suit and tie in order to be come to God. And no, God says, come. I I I, I already know you. Saying, come where you are. Just come. You know, yeah. and 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 see. So. Wow, awesome, awesome testimony. You know, I'll put you guys' um, church link on the description there. You have a website? Uh, I have an Instagram. Or are you okay. talking about the church? 
Yeah, I can tell you now. Once you get your music out, once you get your punk band out, now you gotta you gotta send me some links so I can. I'll send you a link for the song. <laughs> so I can put you guys on. You know, maybe maybe when you get to that point, I have your have your band. Now, what's the name of the band? You guys uh, just started. Uh, CPR three seventeen. CPR three seventeen. Oh, okay. Wow, watch out for that one. So you know, <laughs> I, I I can't wait to hear that. I would love to hear some of that when you guys get get settled so maybe maybe next time we have your have your bands on because you know i want to get more not just groups of drummers like i said in the beginning but more solo artists yeah. guitar players singers so cheyenne you know it's, it was great talking with you yeah now you got it you probably have to i think i might have butchered your your name in the beginning <laughs> so please <laughs> How do you pronounce your last name? Because I might have said it wrong the first time. I've been going over it all week, <laughs> practicing it, you know. So what, how do you pronounce your last name? Uh, it's Meridan. Meridan. Okay. Yeah. And, and what, what nationality is that, your, your husband? Uh, he's Argentinian. So how? Okay. Okay. Awesome. Now, have you gone to visit there or? I have not. No. no? Maybe someday. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, hopefully when we all get over this whole COVID, we can travel again. You know? I know. <laughs> so. That'd be nice. But you have a wonderful day, and uh, it was great talking with you. And tell tell your husband hello. Tell your pops hello. Well, You know, he's doing the, the art. I've seen some of his artwork and your mom, you know. So um, you guys come and visit us at Shuman. <laughs> <So, I know. laughs> you know. All right, we'll talk to you. Um, we'll talk to you soon. Awesome. Thanks for having right. me. Thanks for watching Power and Pounders on YouTube and Facebook. You can also listen to the podcast on Anchor FM, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. God bless. <laughs>